Yeah. This is Front Row MMA. We're here at the Fourth Dimension Mixed Martial Arts Gym in, in, in Long Eaton, Nottingham, and we're joined by, well, it's no longer fair to say debutant anymore because it'll be your second fight at Bama, but we're joined by the Regis the First Sugman, who's going to, uh, we're going to find out a little bit about his past, and we're going to talk a little bit about Bama, and we're going to find out where he wants to go. And so, first off, thank you for hanging around after a day of training. Yeah, no, uh, we appreciate no. that. Look, you're 19 years old. Yeah. You're, which automatically pisses me off because tw I'm twice your age, yeah. but you're already into a pro MMA career. Yeah. Where did the love for the martial arts start from? Because I assume it wasn't MMA first. No. Where did it start? No, it wasn't MMA. I mean, back when I was sort of like three, four, five years old, I was um, kickboxing in a leisure centre once a week with my dad and brother, and then we'd just chuck a pair of gloves on and just punch kick each other. I mean, my dad had just sort of started doing a bit. He was winning the British titles, European titles as a professional full contact kickboxer. And that's where it all started. And when I turned about 14, 15, I fell in love with the K1 side again, K1 side of the game, and I started sort of like finding new ways of throwing techniques and new d people. Met new people come down here for a bit of sparring, just K1 sparring to start off with. Um, had a couple of Thai boxing fights, and then when I was about 16, 17, I got introduced by um, one of my or current main sponsors of Terry Donovan um, into traditional jiu-jitsu and obviously that was all in sort of like breaking arms, breaking yeah. legs and, and I was thinking oh this is a bit serious and then um, Wayne invited me to join with Jimmy and train with him and then a year later and numerous amateur MMA fights I found myself fighting professionally and it was always when I was younger when I was sparring with Chad um, I could never compete with him on a feet, it was too big, so I just used to go in and try and wrestle him. Gloves used to come off and that's it, I was inside trying to take him down. And this was before I had any technique. Um, I fell in love with rugby for a couple of years, played at a county level, um, nearly played at a national level, but I just fell in love with this and I, can't, I couldn't imagine being anywhere else. Is it, is it fair to say that, that, you know, that, that sport is, is sort of part of your DNA then? It, you know, competitive? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, most definitely. I mean. I was, been playing, I was playing rugby and football until I was 18 and um, at a good level, I mean semi-professional football and county level at rugby and I was doing a lot of things and then my dad turned around and said to me about two or three years ago, he says, listen, he says, you're going to have to go one way or the other, it's getting too serious now, so if you want to earn some money, he says, choose your way and I chose this and um, started, it was K1 um, but now obviously I've gone into more of the MMA side of things and I just love everything about it, I love watching the fights, you, know, you can't get a boring fight really when it comes to MMA because it's always exciting somewhere and especially now, I sort of got a really good relationship with Jimmy and Wayne who obviously lets me come and train down here. I'm just like picking up things all the time and the guys that once was just taking me down for fun are now not taking me down anymore. Um, so yeah, it's really... Back in the day when, when MMA started to come to the fore, there was, you know, a, a lot of this sort of the stand-up sports, the boxing, the kick, they were very against it. They, 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 they sort of, uh, what is this renegade sport? Mm. Did you have to compete the, with that with a, with a kickboxing family? Did you have to, you know, you know make the case for the, for the wrestling as uh, it was? Yeah, I did in a way. I mean, it was helped that we actually had a couple of sort of professional MMA fighters I started coming down around gym and doing striking. I mean, as Chad started doing well, and he obviously fought in Glory London, they started fighting all around the world, K1. Some of my mate fighters were looking and thinking, oh, these must be quite good at stand up. So we had them coming down to spot, and that was obviously like a massive thing. And then Chad picked up the sponsor to boost, and then started coming down here, sparring with Andre Winner, Jimmy Warhead, Matt Hall, and people like that. And um, I just started off tagging along. And to be fair, the strikers, even when I was doing both, the amateur side of things and the professional K1, and with the MMA, people started asking me and saying, oh well, you're an MMA fighter, you can't be able to stand up, but I got 9-1 and one as a professional K1 fighter, and five of them come by way of stoppage, so I think I, I proved my point in K1, I mean, I'm still ranked in the rankings, but this is the way I'm going to go now, I'm going to go full on MMA, and I'm going to try and be the best I can be, and first goal is just keep winning, um, I'd love to pick up a Bama belt, it would be like, yeah. First dream sort of come true, so. Yeah, and, and and you had an, you, you fought some amateur MMA as well. Yeah. The, you know there are some there, there are some some people that make the leap straight into the professional cage. How, how, how good a learning curve was the was the amateurs for you? And perhaps what was the what was the biggest lesson you learned competing as an amateur? Um, well, it was it was a big sort of like mind blowing experience for me really because my first two amateur MMA fights I didn't even win. <laughs> and a lot of people sort of saying people that were close to me saying, oh, are "You sure you want to sort of do this?" and you sort of like start to sound a bit more. I says, yeah, it's not that easy. And um, it, it, I mean, I fought a really tough American who was sort of like a big American who had done a proper full on weight cut and um, where I was still just cutting as an amateur. Yeah. Um, and he looked like he was 
messed up at the way and he was like drained to anything and I was just like normal like I do now and um, I jumped in there and to be fair for the two rounds that it lasted he was just like grabbing hold of me and it was one of the worst experiences of my life but from that I managed to come back to here work with Jimmy and I don't think that would happen again if I thought, if I thought the same guy again I'd be surprised if we got out the first round Was that the one that finished in the third with the Camaro? Yeah third in the Camaro yeah against the uh, yeah I mean he did look a big he did look a big yeah, unit man. yeah it was a big unit I needed him some big shots and he was just so committed to taking me down he wasn't really bothered I mean I did mark him up bruise him up a little bit but at the end of the day in the pro game that's going to happen and people's going to keep on coming and um, I learned from that and I learned that maybe I just need to move around a little bit more so I practice running my takedowns practice going for takedowns and I've just come on so much since I've turned amateur it's like first pro fight just proved that for me really and, and was there a, was there a different feeling walking into the cage knowing that this is a pro yeah it sounds a stupid question the cage is the cage but was there a different feeling when that door closed knowing okay this is a pro yeah there was, there was a different feeling but I'm glad to say it was a good feeling I mean end of the day it's first professional MMA fight you got the elbows you got the takedowns you got all sorts of stuff you need to worry about but all I was worried about was me and I've been so many big shows I mean Chad's fought on 10,000 15,000 seat shows and I've been sat there in the corner so it's not like I've been not soaking in the atmosphere and when I come out of Bama obviously the atmosphere was electric when I finished Bama that was feels electric it was just like a great feeling and I enjoy the big stage like the amateur thing for me was sort of like just getting it out because I don't really like the small shows I mean even when I fought K1 when I fought on the big ones it's been like oh well yeah, I was reached its best because the little ones never really done it for me um, but yeah I mean I, I, I just love this and I just love doing it it's amazing. well your pro debut was made at Bama and it was an impressive win and you know it, it's not that long ago you know December 6th I think it was or December 7th so it's only been you know seven or eight weeks and you're going back in yeah. uh, next Saturday facing um, Billick America Billick from, from Austria and, uh, according to Sherry dog he's one and three but yeah. what do you know about this guy do you tend to research do you tend to look at opponents um, what do you know about this guy when i first get this call opponent i do search the internet see what i can find but after that i don't really look i let my dad and my brother do the look in and jimmy and um ranji and of person i train with quite often ranji barrier yeah. um i always let them sort of look at the fights because it really don't matter to me like they tell me how to fight I fight and I win most of the time, so I'd like to keep it that way. Um, I'm not going to say I win some or lose some because at the end of the day it's all about winning. It's all about winning and progressing. And I think going straight into Bama, a lot of people thought, oh, it's a big show. It's like, so I said, listen, I have faith in my team. It's just like, I have big faith in my team. Big faith, obviously, in my dad, main stand up coach, head coach, strength conditioning, and then big faith in Jimmy and Ranji that they know enough about my opponent for me to win. And at the minute, they're all just saying to me, oh, listen, you're going to smash this guy, it's going to smash this guy. It's like, they're not even sort of like, they show respect to the opponent, but they're not actually that worried about it, yeah. um, which obviously gives me that element of relief. It doesn't put any pressure on me. I mean, at some point, it's going to be like, listen, come on, we need, we need to focus now. Stop doing that wrong, stop doing that wrong. But at the minute, they think I'm coming on really well, the same progressing really well, and there's no one that they can see at the minute anywhere near the park line that can cause me any problems. Um, so. you, know, it, you were saying, I suppose the question I want to ask you is, you say that they don't see anything, you know, that, that, that they're not worried about them, that you focus on your own game. Does that mean, do you, and I don't want you to give it away, of course, does that mean you go into fights with sort of a game plan, or do you let them kind of, is it the corner shouting and you let it happen naturally? Uh, yeah, I mean, I go in there with some sort of game plan. Um, game plan's pretty simple for most fights. It's pretty much the same. Um, but I always go in there with uh, some sort of game plan. And at the minute, the game plan that I've used in most fights, obviously with a couple of added extra because it's MMA, um, it's pretty much the same. And it, it's just to go out there and believe in myself, because... I mean, I sparred with Andre Winner, obviously. I sparred with all them people, and they all say to me, listen, you've got nothing to worry about. I says, just do what you do best, and just relax and believe in yourself. And in that first fight, I mean, I was good, but the first round, I wasn't really happy with. I, I didn't feel as if I'd really done myself justice. And then I didn't feel that I was long enough in the second round, because only, what, a minute, um, where I actually had enough time to sort of show that I can do that for the rest of the fight. I can do that for a whole fight. And um, it was just, it was one of them where I could have done better, and I feel as if, that if I do believe myself and let my shots go, like I have in my K1 career, because that's my first and foremost sort of like first two loves, you say, and that is what I like to do. I just let myself go. I've got a couple of nice techniques that I've never thrown before, and I'd like to throw them as well. And I'm sure if I relax from the first bow, like I know I can, I'm sure that won't be an issue. The K1 experience, because you've mentioned it 
throughout the interview so far. Do you think that that's what kind of has mentally prepared you for the for the arenas and for the noise and for the, you know, again, some people might look at somebody in two pro fights and start thinking, oh, you know, not a lot of experience. He's gonna get, but you're experienced. You are experienced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm experienced. I mean, I was just speaking with Jimmy sort of this past week, and he's sort of saying, listen, these kids are gonna get in there, they're gonna fancy the chances because they're gonna think they haven't really had that much time experience. But the amount of training you do, I mean, I'm down here four times a week. I've been for the past two or three years, and even when I've had my fight, I just come back down. And that's obviously a serious injury, but that hasn't happened yet. So I, I just, I, I really have faith in everything I'm doing. And if I didn't, obviously, then I won't be here. But I do, and I believe that no one at the minute can cause me any problems. And the second, the only time I'm gonna get problems is when I've got someone that can cause my coach's problems. And at the minute, is there really anyone like Jimmy Wallen who can cause me problems at my weight? I don't think there is. <laughs> that's, that, that, that's a fair point. Yeah. It's only a week away, less than a week. You, you, Train, what do you do over the last few days? Do you, is it you know? Is it just about keeping weight off? What do you do Wednesday, Thursday? Yeah, j just about keeping weight off. Being Wednesday, jump, come in the gym in the morning, do a few light pads, little light roll. Um, Ranjit comes in on a Wednesday morning, and then probably just chill out for the rest of Wednesday. And then after that, it's just getting the weight down. Just getting the weight down. As nice fighters know, it's like obviously the coolest bit. But when it's done, it's done, and then it's time to fight. And when it's always been like, obviously, it always will be the hardest bit for every fighter, no matter what they say. It always will be. Being 19 and the fact that you're technically still growing, is is bantamweight your home, or do you are you just going to wait to see what you know genetics ends up doing? Yeah, and yeah, yeah that, I'm going to I'm going to wait to see what happens. I mean, as a professional K1 fighter, I was fighting at 66, I had a couple of fights at 70, um, and I wasn't any bigger than what I am now. Um, but that was just because that was easier, and <laughs> I could take fights sort of on a couple of days' notice, which I did on numerous occasions. And um, but now, I mean, the MMA at the minute is bantamweight, most definitely. I mean, at first I fought featherweight, went to a couple of shows, went to a couple of Bama shows, went to the UFC in Nottingham, and I seen some of the guys and thought, I've oh, got bigger than me, and it's like featherweights. And I met a couple of featherweights, and I was like, well, yeah, they look big. And I was like, what weight are you walking around at? Oh, that 78, 79. I was like, yeah, I'm not walking around at that. <laughs> Um, so at the minute it's bantamweight most definitely, but I do believe that I'm going to grow um, into a nice featherweight, uh, maybe even a lightweight. So. For those who haven't seen Regis fight, and for, for those who were stupid enough to miss the last Bama, what can they expect in this fight? Uh, again, without giving a game plan, what does Regis Southern bring to the table? Yeah, um, listen, I, I've been excited to stand up, and that's what I've always brought, and um, I believe that my kicks um, and boxing can cause anyone problems, um, but for this fight I've been working a lot on my elbows, so I'll definitely be sort of like looking out for them. And um, I've got a couple of flash kicks that we've seen that I've been practicing, I've been watching a couple of his videos on YouTube and I'm thinking, yeah, them kicks aren't really that great, you might be kicking a bag, but you have to kick someone, you have to kick a bit harder than that, and I've been practicing a few different techniques, and I really believe that I can catch someone with one of them techniques. Um, I had done it as an amateur, I've done it as a professional K1 fighter, um, and I believe I can again. Um, so I'm really sort of looking forward to sort of showcasing my skills as I always do. And I know when I get to fight like this time, everything will be a lot different because I've done it before. I fought on Bama, I've already won, I've already stopped someone. So doing it again is just another number. How important is is the performance? Because you're talking about new technique and you know looking to, to try and incorporate this. How important is putting on the performance? To, you know, I know the win is everything, but the yeah. Is the performance a very, very close second? Yeah, I believe it is. I mean, to get where you want to get to an MMA, you have to look good. I mean, there's so many guys that I've sort of seen, and I'm thinking, oh, I didn't know Steve, watch a couple of his fights, and it's 12 and 0, but 12 and 0 with three round, boring, holding someone down, throwing a couple of shots, fights, and. Not going to name names. Yeah, right? no. <laughs> People don't want to see that. People just want to see exciting fights. They want to see exciting knockouts, exciting submissions, and just like non-stop back and forth action. And I mean, even just one-way action, sometimes I like to see that as well. But it's all about the fans. It's all about the fans. It's got to be, because at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, it's all about the money. And if you look good, people are going to want you in your shows. If you don't look good, people are going to be like, ah, well, we'll put you on if we find you someone, but we're not really that bothered. Um, and I like to sell a lot of tickets as well, and a lot of people love to come and watch me. I'm an exciting, exciting fighter. Um, so yeah, I just I think the performance is key. The performance is definitely key. I mean, obviously the win's important, and if you don't win, but at the end of the day, nowadays if you don't perform that well, but you're in a great fight, it ain't such a big deal. People still like to see that. So and, and again, you've talked, to, you've mentioned Bam and how cool it is to be fighting on a car. Again, how, how good is it that they want you back so quickly? And, and what's your? It's a it's 
it's a question I ask. It's a stock question, but 16, 18 months down the line, where do you want to be in your MMA career? Yeah, well, ideally, I want to be 16 to 18 months. So I'd like to think I'd have myself sort of like down British title, maybe down to British title, and looking to fight for sort of the Bama World title, and maybe a few other people wanting me sort of like to sign with them. Um, I'd like to think I can get into that position. Because um, at the minute, looking ahead, I'm sort of looking and thinking, well, if I beat him, I'm probably going to fight in someone like this. If I beat him, I'm going to fight someone like this. And I can't say no one's going to cause any problems. I'm doing that sparring with a lot of good guys and a lot of top guys that have been sort of like in that UFC, have been doing a bit of rolling with Brad Pickett and things like that. And I mean, Brad Pickett's next level. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying I've got anything on him because I haven't, but I know sort of what it feels like to be in that position. And if he is there, everyone else is buying with, I'm getting the better off. So I, I feel as if at the minute that I could compete with, if not everyone of the um, in the in the British in the British scene. I, I do I do believe I can. Right. We've seen you fight. We saw the last Bama fight. I've seen some of the amateur performances. The spinning back kick that yeah. stopped the guys fairly stunning. And yeah. so, you know, for people who don't know, you are going to bring you're going to bring that to the table. Before we let you go, though, is there anybody that you would like to give a shout out to? Anybody you'd like to thank or sponsors yeah. for helping you get where you are? Yeah. I mean, I'd like to thank all my sponsors. You got Terry Donovan, Anderson Green, Will Walton at Billio. Ben Atkin at BMA, um, Booster, Wayne Kirk, and fourth time I mentioned Danny where I train. And um, I mean, I've always been thankful to him because he has always let me have this. He's always let me just come down here and train when I want, um, sort of like with everyone. Um, Jimmy Warled, obviously my main sort of like wrestling, MMA sort of coach, bringing it all together. Randy Barry, I do a lot of my groundwork, do my brother, who I do a lot of sparring with. And at the minute, I haven't found anyone that caused any more problems with him, especially on my feet. Um, my little brother, who's like just a nightmare because he takes shot better than anyone I know. Um, and um, obviously, main head coach, my dad, Dean Sugden, he's main man behind my success. And if he didn't keep me on ground level, um, when when you're winning, it's quite easy to sort of just to like go up here and think, oh yeah, I'm the best in the world, I'm just going to keep on winning. But it ain't like that. <laughs> so you've got to get yourself back down to the real world. And he's very good at doing that. Very good at putting through a pace in the gym. And um, I'm getting faster and stronger all the time. And obviously, when the Wayne comes, obviously, I am a bit mardy like everyone is. And he puts up with me and he sort of tells me, listen, there's only a couple more days to get, get over yourself. And <laughs> that, that is what it's all about. So, oh, thank yous. Yeah, uh, Regis, everyone. it's a pleasure catching up with you. It's even more of a pleasure to watch you perform. It's this Saturday, the 21st of February, Wolverhampton, Bama 18. Regis Sug Sugden takes on Mirko Billick and the fifth fight of the night. You'd be crazy to miss it. Thank you so much for your time. Really no, appreciate thank it. You very much. Thank you. Cheers. Oh, <laughs>